All right, welcome everyone. I wanted to thank you for coming. Um, so tonight we'll have this uh, presentation with Buddy Morehouse. Um, it'll run to about 7 p.m. So the library will be closed at that time. You'll have to exit through the back. Um, we also have two restrooms out in that back hallway that you can use at any time. Um, but without further ado, I'll turn things over to Buddy. All right, Amber, thank you very much. Um, I am so happy to be here tonight. Thank you so much. We're You can applaud for being here. Thank you. Give yourselves a big hand. I appreciate that. Um, my name is Buddy Morehouse. I've been in Livingston County now for about 41 years. Um, so pretty much almost all my adult life. And I was the editor of the newspaper for a lot of years. And now I write for the Livingston Post and do a few other things. Um, but I wanted to get just kind of a, we're going to, we're going to talk about a lot of uh, interesting and funny and crazy Livingston County stories that, that happened uh, uh, through the years here. But I wanted to find out, first of all, where everybody is from. So who is here from Howell? Who is it? Yeah, born and raised in Howell. Okay. Uh, anyone from Brighton? Well, I guess every, almost everyone from Howell except for you raised your hand. Where are you from? Fowlerville. Oh, great. Great, great, great. Okay. Um, well, we're going to uh, tell some Howell stories, some Brighton stories, maybe even a few Fowlerville ones. Throw that in there, too. Um, and then how many people have been here for longer than 10 years? Everybody longer than... Almost everyone longer than 10 years, longer than 20. Okay, great. All right, got, got, got some folks that have been here for a while then. Um, so I'm going to start by talking just a little bit about the evolution of the newspaper in uh, Livingston County because I think that's one of the more fascinating things that has happened in the last 40 years or so, certainly in the last 20 years, uh, kind of the life and death of the Livingston County Press and, and the Brighton Argus. Um, so when I first got here back in 1983, I was the sports editor of the newspaper, the Livingston County Press and the Brighton Argus. And back in those days, uh, there were two separate newspapers in Livingston County. They were uh, weekly newspapers, came out every Wednesday. Um, and uh, I was the sports editor for about three and a half years uh, in the 1980s. And then the editor, uh, Rich Pearlberg, left. And I applied and got that job. So I moved from being the sports editor to being the editor. And then I basically stayed there uh, all throughout all my years at, uh, at the newspaper. Um, and then uh, in 2009, they eliminated, when Gannett had bought the newspaper, they eliminated my job. And uh, then I moved on and did a few other things, started making documentaries. And uh, at that time, I started writing for the Livingston Post, which my friend Maria Stewart had started at that time. Um, but really, in, in my mind, and those of you who have been around for a while in, in the county, you might uh, agree or disagree with me, but I think really the glory days of the newspaper in Livingston County were back in the 1980s and 1990s, um, when we were a weekly newspaper, when we came out every Wednesday. Um, this is me at the newspaper in, there we are, the boyish, crusading boyish young editor of the paper, that's me back in about 1992 or so at the newspaper. Um, at that time, we were located at the big building right in downtown Howell, right next to the theater there. And this was in the composing room in the back of the newspaper there, where they actually put the, the paper together. Um, when I first got there, the printing presses were also located right in downtown Howell there. And then they moved out by the outlet mall out on Burkhart Road there. Um, but this is what it was like, the newspaper, back in the 1990s. We, we typed our stories on a computer, but then they actually printed them out, and they laid them out on these pages here, and then they went to the presses from there. So it really changed after we got our, you know, Macintosh computers and everything. But that's what it was like uh, at that time. Um, but really, the glory days, in my mind, in the paper were back when we were weekly newspapers, before we became a daily paper. Um, and... The really cool thing about it then was that uh, we were really the only game in town. Everybody, if you wanted to find out what was going on in Livingston County, you had to get the newspaper. And Wednesday was the biggest day of the week in Livingston County. When the paper came, it was like that thick. It you know, hit with a big thud on your doorstep when you would get it. And everybody, every Wednesday, would just open up the paper and just pour through it. And you'd be looking, not just for what was going on in there, but you'd be looking for names. You would see your friends' names in there. You would look at the sports things and see everybody's uh, kids and how well they were doing in whatever sport they were doing. And it was really just the best time ever. Um, I remember hearing stories that at the Howell Chamber of Commerce, every 
Wednesday when the paper would come out, they would get it first thing in the morning, and they would spend like literally the first three or four hours of the day doing nothing but one at a time, you know, going through every single page of the paper, and they were all sitting around a table talking about what was in there. Um, and one of the best things about it, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, was how upset people would get about things. Everybody had opinions about what was in the paper and what was going on in town, and the newspaper was where all those arguments played out whether it was myself or Maria Stewart writing a column or an editorial about something or people writing letters to the editor about something, everybody had an opinion. Everybody had an opinion, and the newspaper is where all those opinions were aired. Now it seems like it's on Facebook, where if they want to complain about something, that's where you'll go. But back in the day, it was the newspaper. Um, so things were going along great, and then sometime in the 1990s, somebody invented the Internet, and that kind of wrecked everything. Um, the newspaper, eventually in, uh, in the early 2000s, the paper got sold to the uh, Gannett Corporation. And right before that, uh, we became a daily paper. We went from being the twice weekly paper. Well, well, we actually were weekly and then twice weekly for about three years. We came out on Wednesday and on Sunday. And then um, in 2000, uh, we became a daily newspaper. And uh, I think it, it you know, there were good and bad and everything, but I really think it did kind of just change the whole um, nature of, of the newspaper and how it was serving the community at the time. And you'd think it'd be a good thing that we came out every day, but I really think that it was better than when it was a weekly um, newspaper at that time. It was just the center of the community at that time. But Gannett not bought the newspaper in 2006, and then things really just went downhill uh, from there. I think that... Um, no offense if there's anybody here from the newspaper, but I think that, that and it's no fault of yours, but I think that Gannett has ruined our local paper. Um, so I don't, I don't choose to think about that. I choose to think about the great, the great years that we had back when I had that, you know, haircut, and that's how I was looking back there. Um, but Livingston County has uh, always been, in my mind, in, in so many ways, just the greatest place to live and grow up. I think that we have so many advantages here in Livingston County. Um, geographically, I think we're in the best place in the state. Um, we're, we're rural, but we're still close to everything. You know, you're an hour from Detroit, Ann Arbor's close, Lansing's close, Flint's close, anything you want, it's really nearby here. This is just, geographically, it's the best place, place to live. Um, and I also think that we have so much natural beauty here too. We have so many lakes and trails. It's a beautiful county. It's an absolutely beautiful county. Um, it, you know, it's kind of a cliche thing to say that the thing that makes Livingston County great are the people. It, it's obviously true. Um, but uh, I just think that this has been just the absolute greatest place to live. Um, and we've had, thankfully, so many interesting stories that have happened through the years. One of the things, you, who remembers Uber's Drugs in Brighton? Uh, great. Those of us who've been around a while, so now if you get a car, if you rent a car, if you're in a big city and you need to go somewhere, you pronounce that Uber. But those of us who have been in Livingston County a while, we know that that's Uber's. So when Uber, the app, you know, the car ride app, when that became a thing, um, all of us in Livingston County for a long time still were pronouncing it Uber's because we were used to that drugstore in, um, in Brighton. Um, that's not there anymore. But what I, so I, jumping ahead a little bit here, but um, recently I wrote this book called The Taco Bell for Howell. Um, that is just kind of like a collection of stories in here about Livingston County. Um, just some dumb things that have happened, a couple serious things, but mostly it's dumb and silly things that have happened. Um, this, if you want to get one, it's on Amazon, it's like $12, more than welcome to, um, you already have it? Bless your heart. Oh, good. Okay, good. It only takes a couple hours or so to read the, to read the whole thing. It's a quick one. It's a quick, well, I appreciate that. Um, but one of the things in here is I have a chapter in here that talks about the differences between Brighton and Howell. The differences between Brighton and Howell. Because um, Livingston County is, I think, unique in Michigan in that we don't have one big city. Like in Washtenaw County, it's Ann Arbor. In Ingham County, it's Lansing. Genesee County, it's Flint. Livingston County, we really have two equally you know, big communities, Brighton and Howell. And um, they're rivals, of course, in everything. You know, in sports, they're rivals. Uh, people are always having debates about whether downtown Brighton is better or downtown Howell is better. Downtown Brighton, the traffic is much worse. Um, you know, 
Is it better to have a courthouse, the beautiful courthouse, or is it better to have the mill pond in there? Um, so it's I, I love both both cities. I've 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 worked in Brighton for years. I live in Howell. Um, I work I lived in Howell. I mean I said I worked in Howell for a lot of years too. So I spent so much time in both those communities, as I'm sure all of you have. Um, but in my mind, really the biggest difference between Brighton and Howell is that people in, and this was played out in the newspaper, is that people in Brighton complain about everything, absolutely everything. People in Howell complain about nothing, even when they should. And here are a few examples. Um, th this played out in the newspaper because every time something would happen in town, particularly when something new would show up, everybody wrote a letter to the editor about it, complaining about whatever it happened to be. Now, the reason I have Ubers on here is that one of the big things in the 1980s was that Ubers, the, the, the man who was the pharmacist there who owned it was this guy named Bob Herbst, the nicest man in the world. He looked like he was right off the Andy Griffith show. And for whatever reason, in the 1980s, he decided that he had needed to have the biggest collection of dirty magazines you've ever seen in your life. So Uber's Drugs, you'd go in there, this nice small town little pharmacy, and in here is this enormous selection of the worst magazine you'd ever seen. So of course, everybody had an opinion about that uh, in there. Um, the list of other things that people have complained about in Brighton through the years that have been big controversial things have been the Tridge, that little you know thing that three ways that is in the middle of the mill pond there, that three-way bridge, um, the Stillwater Grill, when that was built, people didn't like the, the design of that thing. Uh, the condos that are right at the railroad tracks uh, there in, in Brighton, they thought that was going to be the worst thing ever. Um, the ugly naked guy statue, which we're going to talk about later. And <clears throat> the biggest thing that people always complained about in Brighton were the roundabouts. Um, these are the roundabouts that are right at Lee Road and uh, US 23. It's like Costco and and Kohl's are right over here, and then the mall with J.C. Penney's and everything are right over there. When these came in to town uh, in 2006, these were a godsend in terms of generating letters to the editor. Everybody in Brighton um, had an opinion about the roundabouts. They were golden for me because I got to write a column almost every week about, you know, about the roundabouts. I don't know what your opinion is. Maybe I'll take a quick poll. I hate them. I absolutely hate the roundabouts. You, you are in Livingston County, you fall into one of two camps. You either love them and you think that everybody else is an idiot if they don't know how to drive through them, or you hate them. Um, my mind, in my opinion, I hate them uh, in there. Anybody love them, hate them, love them, hate them, you hate them? You, well, I think, I think the idea was that, you know, they, when they built it, the, when they built Costco and Coles here, they said, you know what, we could put just a stoplight there, but what fun would that be? You know, you would just drive into the parking lot without any incident. What what fun is that? So they decided they're going to have two roundabouts. And I, I always said the idea was that if you made it through one roundabout without getting killed, there was no way you were going to make it through the other one uh, on there. Um, yeah, th this is the, like the only double roundabout in, in Livingston or in, in Michigan. Um, uh, it was at the time. I don't know if it still is or not. But this was a gold mine in Everybody in Brighton wrote letters to the editor complaining about this. Everybody. Howell decided that, you know what, we can't outdo Brighton when it comes to having bigger roundabouts and enormous roundabouts. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to make the smallest roundabouts we can possibly find. So they... This was, this was, these, these came in after the double roundabouts came in. What Howell decided to do is they said, we're going to take these things. We're going to put them all throughout our neighborhoods, these teeny tiny little things that they, they said that the whole purpose behind them is that they were traffic calming. They were going to calm the traffic as though people were, you know, drag racing down Washington Street um, there. They said, we're going to put these things in there and be uh, calming in there. So I have hated these things ever since they came in. And I live right in downtown Howell now, so I'm right, right near one of these things. I thought that I would eventually get used to them. I didn't. I hate them. Um, my issue with the teeny tiny roundabouts are they serve no purpose. And also, when you pull up to them and you need to make a left turn, do you go that way or do you go around the roundabout? Nobody knows. 
So these things show up in Howell in, I think it was like uh, 2008 or so, though they, they popped up in there. And I'm going, oh, great. Finally, we have something in Howell that people are going to get upset about. And they're going to you know complain and write letters to the editor about. And I wrote a column about how dumb they were and that I hated them. And I was, oh, boy, I'm waiting for all the people in Howell to get upset. And nobody cared. Nobody in Howell seemed to care about these things. Anytime, so if these things weren't bright, if these popped up in Brighton, they would have been, you know, a conniption. But in Howell, eh, eh, well, whatever. Um, so my theory is in, in Livingston County is that the farther west you go, the less people complain about things. I have, uh, I, I lived in the Fowlerville School District for years. I lived in Fowlerville and I lived in Gregory. Three of my kids went to Fowlerville High School. I've been around Fowlerville people forever. I have not heard a Fowlerville person complain about anything ever. You're from Fowlerville. Do you complain about anything? <laughs> Fowlerville people complain about nothing. You could put something new in their town. They go, eh, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, part of it's because they're farm people, and a lot of them, they just don't complain about stuff. But the farther east you go, you know, you get into Howell, maybe a little bit. But you get to Brighton and Heartland, they're going to complain about everything. You put anything you, you know, is new coming into your community. Um, so these things show up in Howell, and I'm thinking, oh, boy, everyone's going to start complaining about it. Nobody says a word about the, these dumb uh, roundabouts in there. Finally, in 2011, this guy named Richard Tribus, who I do not know, he took up this cause. He said, I'm going to organize a big effort to uh, get the roundabouts torn out in there. So he like started collecting petitions from people. I think most of the people who signed it were probably from Brighton. Um, but he ended up getting enough signatures. He took it to the city council. He said, here, we want these things taken out. And the city council voted on a four to three uh, vote that they were going to keep them in. So my understanding is that the last election, this was kind of like a big deal between the two guys who were running for mayor in there. So eventually, you know, hopefully these things are going to get taken out. Because um, in my mind, they're just confusing. They don't serve any purpose. And again, if I'm offending anyone, if any of you are, are lovers of the teeny tiny roundabouts, I apologize. Um, there's just something that I feel, feel very passionate about. Um, so one of the other things I think that's unique about Livingston County is how excited we get when something new, like a new chain store or new chain restaurant comes into our county. It is like we have never seen a Walmart before. And when one comes into our town, it's like, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe this. So the biggest examples that I can think of were when the Target store came to Brighton. This was like, you know, Elvis Presley had come back to life and he was going to be appearing in our community. People were so incredibly excited that we were getting a Target store. They were like lining up the night before it opened because they wanted to go and be the first ones in the Target store. Um, it, was a, it was absolutely amazing. When the first Walmart opened in Howell, it was kind of that same thing. And if you remember, the first Walmart was, it was across the street. Yeah, it's where Carson's and Elder Beerman uh, were. That's where the first Walmart uh, was. So they, they built that Walmart, and then um, they quickly realized after that, well, this, is, this isn't going to do it. We're going to have, they, it literally was open like a week, and they said, oh, we got to build a bigger one across the street uh, over there. So that's how that happened. That little Walmart was open, and they built one right across the street there. Um, but it, to, to go off on a little tangent in there, a, a while back I researched all of the department stores in Livingston County when they opened um, because, like, that's something that everybody had got really excited about and everything. Does anyone know the – not counting the D&C stores that were downtown, does anyone know the first department store that opened in Livingston County, what it was? We have a winner. Yes, Grants in Brighton. Yes, excellent. Um, yeah, uh, Grants at the Brighton Mall opened in 1971. That was our first uh, department store that we had. And it only lasted there like five years or so, and then, in, then Kmart came in right after that. So, yes, yeah, the anti Brighton Mall. Um, that's, it was like the first store, the first big store that was in there. So the early 70s, we got our first big one in there. Um, our first Meyer store came to Brighton in 1980. That was the first one that we got uh, after that. And that was an enormous thing. Um, I, I came here in 83, so this is a little bit before my time. But when I'm talking to people in Brighton, um, one of the guys I, I, that I talked to about this was uh, Dave Lou Allen, the Channel 7 newscaster who grew up in Brighton. He said when he was a kid, 
He said the absolute biggest thing that ever happened in our town, by far, by far, was when McDonald's opened. 1974, the first McDonald's opened in Brighton, and he said, you know, we had thought we had just died and gone to heaven. Um, that was just the greatest thing we'd ever seen in our life. Um, yeah, so, so Grant, that's your, your trivia for the day. The Grant store was the first one to open in Livingston County uh, after that. So this is the other thing that people in uh, Brighton have a lot of opinions about. This is the ugly naked guy statue in downtown Brighton. Um, the, the, it's not, actually, I don't think it's there right now. They're going to be bringing him back, but they just did that streetscape project in downtown Brighton and got rid of him. So this is a statue that they uh, brought in back in 2004, 2005 or so. Um, the mayor of Brighton at the time, this woman named Kate Lawrence, had this idea that she wanted to bring a lot of public art to Livingston County and to downtown Brighton. And she came up with this thing called the Brighton Biennial, where we would get these statues that would come in uh, and then they would, um, you know, other outdoor art and everything. They would be here for two years and then we'd move them on. And the first piece that we got was actually not the ugly naked guy. The first piece that we got was this statue in Brighton. It was called Evolution One. And this was, you talk about giving people in Brighton something to complain about. I don't think anybody has complained about it. Even the roundabouts couldn't hold a candle to Evolution One when it comes to complaining. When, when we first heard that we were going to be getting all this cool outdoor art in Brighton, everyone was going, oh, wow, this is great. We're going to have, like, you know, sculptures and, and uh, you know, like uh, Da Vinci statues, and it's going to be, oh, so beautiful. Instead, the first thing we got was this. They looked like something from the Jetsons. Um, it was just this ugly, ugly thing that was located uh, kind of right next to Uber's um, over there, and people just flipped their minds. They said, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It makes us look like hillbillies. Um, but that was the first statue that came in. And then right after that, the ugly naked guy uh, came in. So the ugly naked guy is, is a statue that was done by this, this very famous sculptor named Jay Holland. And uh, the actual name of the statue was Decision Pending. And when this came, it's a little, short, little, you know, naked guy. He's very, he, he's ugly. Um, so that, of course, generated tons of letters to the editor and lots of controversy and everything. So I, at some point, I wrote a column in the paper where I was talking about this, because that's what everyone in, in the county was talking about. And I was the first one who called the statue the ugly naked guy. Um, and one of the absolute highlights of my entire life, my entire career, is that if you go on the Wikipedia page for the ugly naked guy in there, you will see in there that it credits me as the one who came up with the nickname. So I tell my kids that, you know, I'm proud of you. Yeah, you guys are great and everything like that. But I'm more proud of the fact that I am credited on Wikipedia as the one who came up with the name, the ugly naked guy. One of the high, absolute highlights of my entire life in there. Um, but this thing has been a gold mine also for you know controversy in Livingston County. It, it's kind of an illustration too of just how, how even though we're growing, just how small town we really are still here. That it's something like this that everyone gets, you know, we're not complaining about crime or thing, we're arguing about a little naked statue. It is, and it's located right by that church. Yeah, a lot of people were upset that it. It's also it's near the uh, Veterans Memorial uh, that's there too. Um, but yeah, it's right by the right by the church there. So uh, again, it, it's it was a gold mine for me. It continued to be a gold mine for me um, in there. So I just absolutely have loved the ugly naked guy. Um, so real briefly, I just want to tell you a story about how I so I'm, I call my book a Taco Bell for Howell um, and other Livingston County Crusades. So real briefly, the reason that I came up with the name for that is that. Uh, I, be, I became known among people that read the paper for a while as somebody that was obsessed with Taco Bell, that that's all I ever wrote about was Taco Bell. That was, you know, at least half the columns I ever wrote were, were about Taco Bell. Um, and it started in the uh, 1980s when I wrote a column was comparing Brighton and Howell, you know, which town is better in there. And I laid out all the pluses in, of both communities. <laughs> and then I said, in the end, I have to say that Brighton is better because Brighton has a Taco Bell. And, you know, that's the, the thing. So I was trying to be funny in there, but people picked up on that, that, yeah, you know, that is 
you know, we need we do need to talk about for Howell. So I got a lot of reaction out of that. And then um, I decided I was going to make it a cause that I was going to try to campaign to get a Taco Bell for Howell. Um, so literally every month or two, I would I would I wrote letters to the Taco Bell people. I wrote um, you know columns all the time about how glorious it would be if, if Howell got a Taco Bell. And yeah, sure we have this courthouse, but so what? We need a Taco Bell in there. <clears throat> That's really going to make us a great community. Um, so finally. In 1990, the Taco Bell opened in Howell. It's actually in Genoa Township, but I consider that Howell. Uh, it opened up here, and I, even though they, you know, I, of course, had absolutely nothing to do with it, I took full credit for the fact that Howell now had a Taco Bell. I was, you know, the, consider myself a champion of the community. I've done it. I've gotten us a, a Taco Bell. Great. Then I turned my attention to getting a Taco Bell for Fowlerville, finally did a Taco Bell for Pinckney. You know, we got one there. We now have six Taco Bells in Livingston County. We don't have just one in Howell. We have, as you know, we have two Taco Bells in Howell. Brighton only has one. So we are now, we have officially become better than, we are number one, yes. We have officially become better than Brighton now because we have two Taco Bells and we only have one. They're leading us in Panera Breads two to one, um, but we do have two Taco Bells, so that makes us, that makes us better. But that's, that's how the, the, um, that's how the, that came about, the, the title of the book. It was this obsession I had for bringing a Taco Bell to Howell. Um, again, along with coming up with the name for the ugly naked guy, though, so that's the highlight of my, that's the highlight of my life. Um, this is another story I wrote about real briefly in the book. Uh, this is when um, the rock band Kiss came to Heartland to give a concert. Um, the list of, of performers, famous people who have in groups that have performed in Livingston County is pretty amazing. And some of these you might know, some of the people who have performed in Livingston County. But Tim Allen has performed here. Uh, they used to do comedy at Cardona's Pizza in Brighton back in the 1980s. So Tim Allen has performed here. The Fowlerville Fairs had tons of famous people that have performed there. Loretta Lynn has performed there. Um, Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, Mandy Moore, if you know who she is, this uh, pop singer. Mandy Moore did one of the most famous concerts in Fowlerville Fair history. Um, she came, and this was in the year 2000. Everybody, my daughter included, was just so incredibly excited that Mandy Moore was coming here. She came here, and she did a concert that lasted 12 minutes. She literally sang three songs in there, and it was the biggest controversy ever. Um, so Mandy Moore lost all of her Livingston County fans at that time. Um, Mickey Rooney uh, performed in Brighton in there. Rich Little uh, performed in, in, in Brighton. Um, and then again, you know, tons of people, tons of country stars performed at the Fallible Fair and a lot of oldies rock bands too. But the story of Kiss performing in Heartland was one of the coolest stories ever. This happened in 1975, right before they became really big. Um, there was an ice rink in Heartland. It, it was located right at the intersection of, you know, 23 and 59 there this ice ring in Heartland there. And this guy who owned it was trying to do all these, these crazy things to um, you know, put his like, ice rink on the map. So one of the things he decided to do is he was going to have rock concerts there in the 70s. And this is just when Kiss started to explode, just when they started to become enormous. And this photo was actually taken in Heartland at that, at that concert there. Um, so what this guy did is he started selling tickets for this, this concert there. This is an ice rink. You know, it's just a small town little ice rink. With all the chairs and everything out on the on the ice, uh, you know they covered it up with all the chairs out there and with the bleachers. You could maybe seat fifteen hundred people total. So of course he sold five thousand tickets to this concert, this Kiss concert, uh, and all hell broke loose the night that this uh, concert took place. Everybody showed up. Everybody was drunk when they're coming there. There was no parking for that many cars, so. Um, they, it, people were just parking like along M59, parking wherever they wanted to. There was a grocery store right near there called Food Town. Of course, they overran that thing. The guy at the ice rink was like overwhelmed then that all these people they had sold tickets to actually showed up. So he closed the doors. He wasn't letting everybody in yet until the concert was going to start. So everybody started going to the bathroom in the parking lot at the Food Town. And um, it, I, again, I was not around at this time, but my understanding is this was the most legendary concert that ever took place in Livingston County was when KISS came to Heartland in 1975 in a 
Yeah, I, I've heard stories from people that were there that said it was absolutely great. Um, so I'm going to get to this story in a minute. This is when Melissa Gilbert came to Howell. Um, but just a couple of other things that I wanted to uh, touch on, look, a couple stories, and then you know I wanted to kind of throw it open for questions and hear what, hear what stories you guys might have to tell us as well. But um, Livingston County through the years has uh, been the source of a lot of urban legends, like a lot of communities. Um, the, the, the biggest one that I could think of that took place in Howell is there was a rumor going around throughout the 1990s when the Detroit Red Wings were really getting good that Steve Eiserman lived on Latson Road in Howell. Anyone else hear that rumor? You've heard that rumor. Okay. There, I don't know how it started. He, he did not. He never did. But I don't know how the rumor started. But this rumor started when the Red Wings were winning, you know, Stanley Cups in the 90s there. That, yeah, Steve Eiserman, that big house on uh, Latson Road, it's at the corner of Golf Club or Fuse or whatever that is. That big house there. He goes, yeah, Steve Eiserman lives, lives there. So somehow it spread everywhere. My daughter was in high school at the time at Fowlerville High School, and she, you know, came home and told me, yeah, Steve Eiserman was in, on Lanston Road. I go, what? I would have known that. Well, it eventually got so big, the story got so big, that we actually sent a reporter to knock on the guy's door, you know, thinking that Steve Eiserman was going to open the door in his Red Wings jersey, and, you know, hey, how's it going? Come on in. Um, Steve Eiserman did not live at the thing. The guy who did live there, his name was Steve. Um, but he told our reporter all these stories. He said, yeah, people pull up here all the time. They're like knocking on my door, wanting an autograph. And, you know, I'm going, well, I'll give you my autograph, but I don't know how much it'll be worth. Um, so somehow this urban legend started that Steve Eiserman lived in Howell. So I hope I'm not bursting any bubbles here, but no, Steve Eiserman never did live in Howell. Um, the other big urban legend that's always been in Livingston County is what is buried underneath Mount Brighton? <laughs> Okay, what? so you've heard an elephant. That, uh, this is the first I've heard the elephant theory. Mount Brighton. Oh, that's a, that's where? There's an elephant buried in Howell? Cool, where? Right downtown? Right on Grand River there? Country Squire? I must have heard this one and forgotten it. That's a great one. Okay. Hmm. That there's a, all right. I got to get up on this. I got to take that tour. I got to I got to take that tour then. Oh, very cool. Um, well, Mount Brighton though. Uh, so what have you heard is buried under me? You heard trash. That was that was always a rumor forever. Yep. Oh, Jimmy Hoffa? Yeah, why not? He's buried there, sir. Okay. Although he died, you know, 20 years after they built Mount. So Mount Brighton opened in 1961 uh, in there. And, yeah, people swear to this day that they saw them hauling garbage there. That it was either old tires or garbage. That Mount Brighton is built on a heap of, you know, old garbage or, or tires or everything. So uh, finally, I went back and looked at the newspapers from 1961, and I found an article in there where it talked about them. And it was when they were building the highway, but it wasn't that. It was just dirt. They hire, they hauled all the dirt in there. And so as interesting as it would be that it was a whole bunch of tires and garbage and everything, it's just dirt. So so Steve Eiserman never lived on Lanson Road. And also uh, Mount Brighton is just on dirt. There's no. So those are, there was also an urban legend for a while that Coleman Young, the mayor of Detroit, that he lived in Howell. Um, and that was also, that was also not true. Um, Oh, Claudia. <laughs> okay. His cousin Claude. Okay. Eric Hipple did. Eric Hipple lived up near uh, like Fenton, uh, up that way. Yep. Um, yeah. So we've had a few a few famous people. So speaking of famous people that live in Livingston County, here is the story of Melissa Gilbert and Timothy Busfield, her husband, and most importantly, how I fit into the story because you know that. Yeah, every story is somehow has to include me in it. Um, so yeah, Melissa Gilbert is the most famous person that's ever, as far as I know, has ever lived in Howell. Um, and what happened is, uh, this is fairly recent here. You guys probably remember a lot of this. So in 2013, 
Melissa Gilbert from Little House on the Prairie. She married Timothy Busfeld, who was an actor who was in on uh, a 30 something, and he was in my favorite movie, Revenge of the Nerds. Um, but they got married. Timothy Busfeld was from Michigan. He went to Michigan State, and he was from Michigan. And uh, they decided that they were tired of Hollywood and all that, and they wanted to move to a small town in his home state of Michigan. So he had been in Howell a few times. Um, you know, had always kind of fallen in love with it. So he came here with his new bride, Melissa Gilbert, and they just fell in love with Howell. And they decided they were going to move here into, into Howell. So in 2013, these two Hollywood stars moved to our little town. Uh, they rented a house on Washington Street, just a couple blocks from here. And it was once word got out, and, and they didn't hide it at all. Melissa was so happy about everything, and she was, you know, um, tweeting all the time about how much she loved the food here, and the people were so wonderful. And Livingston County really embraced them when they came here. Um, a couple years later, they were the Grand Marshals at the Fantasy of Lights Parade. And so it's just an enormous deal. Um, I never, the whole time that we were here, I never actually met Melissa. The closest I came is um, my daughter, Lottie, who's now 19 years old. Um, this was like 10 years ago, 11 years ago or so. Uh, she always used to trick or treat in that neighborhood over there. My mom lived in Howell, so we would come in and we would trick or treat there all the time. And there was a rumor going around among the trick or treaters that over at Melissa Gilbert's house, she was handing out full-size um, candy bars, like full-size Butterfingers or whatever they were. So, of course, everybody hightailed it over to Washington Street. So, sure enough, we went over there, and Melissa Gilbert was dressed up in a witch's outfit, and she was, you know, over there handing full-size candy bars. Um, just the coolest thing ever. Um, so that's the only time that I ever met her. But here's how I figure into the story. So this became a big deal when, when she moved here. And... Uh, at some point in 2015, um, the Melissa had moved from her place in Howell. They wanted to buy a house here. So they bought this house in Genoa Township that was an old log cabin that had been, you know, refinished and refurbished and everything that was in the woods. So that was another big story that now Melissa Gilbert's living in this, you know, that little house in the prairie. She's living in a little cabin in the woods. It was just a house, but, it, you know, it was like a log cabin. Um, <clears throat> so... Word spread that, that this had happened. And out of the blue, I got contacted by this reporter from a supermarket tabloid that was called Closer Weekly. Closer Weekly. So what this reporter did, she was, she was out in L.A., is she had just Googled uh, Melissa Gilbert Howell. And the first thing that popped up was this column that I had written that when she first moved here saying, hey, Melissa Gilbert, welcome to Howell. Here are a few things you need to know um, about, you know, living in Livingston County. Like I told her how to pronounce Genoa and Unadilla. You know, I told her when you're driving from Howell to Brighton on the highway, don't go in the right lane because it's going to be like a washboard. You got to stay in the middle. So the first thing that popped up on Google was this article that I'd written. So somehow in the eyes of this reporter from Closer Weekly, I was the expert on Melissa Gilbert in Howell. So she got my email, sent me an email saying, hey, I'm doing an article about this Hollywood star living in this small town in Michigan. Would you be happy to, you know, would you be willing to do an interview? And I go, sure. All right, why not? That'd be great. So she interviewed me and she interviewed Pat Convery from the Howell Chamber of Commerce. We were the two local, local sources there. So um, one of the first questions that she asked me was uh, in this interview was, um, so I heard that they, they, like move to a log cabin in the woods there. I go, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it's like right near, you know, Howell, it's called Genoa Township. It's right outside here. Oh, so do you think they have to hunt and kill their own food now? And well, they could if they want to. I'm assuming they'll just drive to Meyer and, you know, buy whatever they want. So this person in, you know, LA is thinking that we are the Beverly Hillbillies out here living in, and that Melissa Gilbert and her husband are now having to hunt and kill their own food. Um, said, you know, I kind of doubt they're doing that. It's just a house uh, there. Um, and then, you know, just asking me a few things. And then this other question she asked me that I totally forgotten about till the article actually came out is Melissa Gilbert had gotten a lot of publicity right before this because she had decided that she was going to have her breast implants removed. She'd gotten breast implants when she, you know, got big in Hollywood and everything. So she was going to have them removed. So this woman asked me in the interview, as though I'm, you know, the authority on this. 
So why do you think Melissa Gilbert decided to have her breast implant removed? I'm kidding. Yeah, I, I don't know. I said, you know, we're not very fake or phony out here. Maybe, you know, she's just trying to keep it real or whatever. And I'd totally forgotten that this question had come up. So, of course, when the article comes out in Closer Weekly, this is in August of 2015. Let me just show you the article in here. Her Escape from Hollywood. Here's Melissa Gilbert, the article. This is one of these tabloids that, like, you know, 3 million people pick up at the, at the uh, supermarket everywhere. This is, um, there's a picture of downtown Howell in here and everything. And my quote, and here's my quote that made it in here. Here, Once Melissa said it on Howell, something else was soon gone. She removed her double D imp breast implant. Says Morehouse, I think it was a symbolic thing. So I'm going, great. For the first time in my life, I make it into a national publication. Here I am a journalist, you know, kind of my whole life I've been working to get attention for this. I finally make it into a national magazine, and this is what they quote me talking about. Melissa Gilbert and her breast implant. Um, so I got teased quite a bit by that, uh, by all my friends and everyone else in, uh, um, who, who saw that. So anyway, it's a collector's item now, the, the magazine about Melissa Gilbert and Howell in there. But that's one of the most embarrassing things that's happening. Um, but last thing I wanted to close with here, uh, and then throw it over for any questions you have or anything else you have, is one of the chapters that I have in the book here are 10 things that you might not have known about Livingston County. 10 things you probably never knew about Livingston County. I'm just going to read them here. This is trivia now you can take home to all your friends and impress them with. Um, number one, Babe Ruth was once arrested and taken to court in Howell. So in 1926, Babe Ruth got arrested for, he, he had a friend who lived on Island Lake in Brighton, and every time the Yankees would be in, um, in Detroit playing the Tigers, he would go out and stay with his friend, and they would go fishing. Well, one time, uh, he caught too many fish, and he caught a bunch of fish that were undersized, and there was a game warden there who arrested him. And it was a, like a, apparently doing that, catching too many fish back in 1926 was a huge deal. So they arrested Babe Ruth and they took him to court at the Livingston County Courthouse right here in Howell at the height of his fame. And when word got out in Howell that Babe Ruth was going to be there, it, apparently it was like, you know, the, the parade. Uh, everybody showed up there. And, um, you know, the, the, the judge from the newspaper articles I read, he had to throw the case out on some technicality. The guy didn't show up or whatever. But Babe Ruth once got taken to court in Howell. Frank Zappa, the famous singer, he learned how to shoot a gun in Hurt. Another good one for you. He was the producer for this uh, rock band called Grand Funk Railroad that had a studio in Heartland there. And he spent the summer in 1975 in Heartland. And the guy um, from Grand Funk Railroad, his leader of the group, Mark Farner, um, was into like target practice. And he taught Frank Zappa how to shoot a gun there. This is one I really like. There is not a single building in Livingston County that's taller than four stories. And the only two buildings we have that are four stories are two hotels. There's one uh, Hampton Inn in Howell here, and then there's a Holiday Inn in Brighton that are just like barely four stories. Other than that, there's not a building in, in the county that's taller than three stories. So when you talk about Livingston County growing and all that, we're still, you know, we don't have a single building taller than four stories. Um, Governor George Romney is buried in Brighton. Um, he had no connection. He was, he was the governor here, of course, but he had no connection to Brighton other than the fact that he lived in Bloomfield Hills and he served in Lansing and he always had this idea that he wanted to be buried in this beautiful spot midway in between. So, um, so the whole Romney family came here in the, in the 1990s when Lord Romney was buried. Um, Chuck Berry, legendary Chuck Berry, once performed at a balloon festival in Brighton. In the 1980s, Brighton had its own balloon festival and it was an enormous flop, but they were trying to do something to uh, get a lot of publicity the first year. So they hired Chuck Berry to come out there and play. It was in a big field right off US 23, enormous flop. Um, this is a, a, an old one. There used to be a movie theater in downtown Fowlerville. Yeah, the Orr Theater. Okay. <laughs> so you do, okay, good. Yeah, you know where that was then. I was shocked to find out. I didn't know there was a movie theater in downtown Fowlerville. Yeah, there was an opera house too. It was in downtown Fowlerville. Um, 
there's a subdivision in Livingston County. Most of our subdivisions are called oaks or pines or you know meadows or something like that. There's actually a subdivision in Livingston County that's called Satan's Hills. Can you guess where Satan's Hills is? In hell, yes, of course. We also, we have hell in Livingston County. So yeah, some, there's like five houses that are there, but we have a, I think it's the, the most unusual name for a subdivision in Livingston County is Satan's Hills here. Um, there used to be an enormous ski jump in Brighton, like an Olympic ski jump. In the 1930s, there were these uh, brothers, the Hill brothers, who were from the Upper Peninsula, who were like the biggest ski jumpers in the, in the world, and they built this ski jump in Brighton. This is the 1930s, and every weekend in the winter, people would come from all over the Midwest to come to Brighton to watch ski jumping competitions. They eventually had to close it down because all the local kids, and I heard this story from people who used to do it, they would, at night, they would bring their toboggans up to the top and caused a lot of trouble uh, at that point. So it was only there for like three or four years or so. But yeah, there was an Olympic ski jump in Brighton. Um, uh, one of the people who performed at the Fallible Fair was Alice Cooper, the, the uh, rock star. And of course, that prompted a bunch of letters to the editor. And the last one is there three Oscar winners have filmed movies in Livingston County. Adrian Brody uh, was in the movie called High School that they filmed at the Parker High School about 15 years ago. That was a whole fiasco. Uh, Hillary Swank, uh, the actress, she was in a movie called Conviction. They filmed a bunch of scenes at the Livingston County Courthouse. And Robert De Niro filmed the movie here. Um, it was one scene of a movie. It was a movie called Stone. And th it was a scene, he filmed this in Unadilla, right outside the Unadilla store. And the only scene was, and I, I got the pictures from the people who, who worked at the Unadilla store, was him driving along a road and getting out of his car and getting in somebody else's car and moving along. But he stopped in the Unadilla store and bought like some wine and a t-shirt. And um, so, yeah, there's your other, there's your other thing. So um, anyway, I, I if, if, if you can't tell, I absolutely love Livingston County. I like making fun of things that happen in Livingston County. And as cliche it is, as it is, I love the people most of all. They're the absolute best people. In the world. And I'm sure we all agree because that's why we love it so much. So um, anyway, that's all I have. But do you, any of you have any questions or stories that you want to share? The Follow and Losing Views is a great paper. That's a great paper. No, the only, new, the only technical newspaper that we have is Livingston County Daily Press and Argus, and it's it's nothing now, and, and it's no fault. There's like three people left at the paper. It's no fault of theirs in there, but it's the Gannett Corporation that bought the paper. Just, you know, they, they basically abandoned it. They sold the building in downtown Howell. The, the couple of reporters they do have, they work at the Brighton Chamber of Commerce at their office now. So, yeah, no, we don't have a newspaper. Oh, good. If you go to on the Livingston Post, uh, so the Livingston Post is an online publication. The website is thelivingstonpost.com. Um, that is a news website that my friend Maria Stewart started. Maria was the other editor at the newspaper when I was there. And I still write, I, I have a, a couple other full-time jobs right now. I work for the State Charter School Association and I also teach at Hillsdale College. Um, but I just for fun, whenever something pops in my head, I write an article for the Livingston Post. So if you want to see some interesting things in there, and it's all archived, you can see tons of old things in there. Oh, I, I, I it was it was about uh, hey Melissa Gilbert. Here's what you need to know about Howell. Yeah, if you go in the Livingston Post and type Melissa Gilbert in, it'll pop up. That'll that'll pop up in there. Um, any other stories or anything else you guys want to? <laughs> my wife, I, I actually met my wife in a community theater of Howell production. Yeah. You, well, so Kathy, my wife, she just directed their youth show at the community theater of Howell. They just did a year with Frog and Toad, and she directed it. And my daughter, Lottie, who's been in a lot of CTH shows, she is... Um, she was the choreographer for it, and you know she's been in a lot of stuff too. So, so our family's finally getting back. I I don't think I'm going to get back on the stage, but um, 
Yeah, my wife and I met in a production of Kiss Me Kate um, back in 1993. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you. That's great. Um, well, it, yes, if, if you want to find more great stories about what happened in the county, other interesting things like that, go on the Livingston Post. There's all kinds of interesting articles in there. Um, and again, every time something will pop in my head that I'll... Um, oh, the other big one, like the bit... Yeah, I talked about how excited people get when something new comes to the, to their, to the county here. When the Panda Express opened in Howell, it was like, it, you had, it, on Facebook, you'd see every day there'd be like people doing updates. Are they open yet? Are they open? Oh my God, are they open yet? So I drove by the day that the thing opened and the line was like, you know, down the, it was all the way into uh, uh, Lowe's there, you know, that thing. It's like, we, you know, who's, who hasn't been to a Panda Express before? Or in every mall in the world. <laughs> every mall, well, if you want to see one, you just go any mall. But it's like, when it came to Howell, it was like the biggest thing ever. Um, yeah, so that, but that, but that just shows our small town character. We haven't lost that. Great one, yes, Bob Seeger did. He, yeah, Maria Stewart wrote a, wrote a story about that. She got so like a ticket stub from it. Um, he also used to play at a bar in Brighton called the Main Event. Um, but yeah, he did. He did a real legendary concert at the Howell Armory. There, that was really really cool. Yeah, so much cool stuff, so much cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's a lot of changes there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the DNC. Yeah, that's where Diamond Steakhouse is now. Yeah, that was used to be the DNC. Yeah. That's great. That was my favorite restaurant that's no longer here. There are a couple of them. One was the Midget. The Midget was a restaurant. It was as greasy a spoon you could ever imagine, located right next to the Howell Theater. Um, and then there was another restaurant called Annie's Pot that I loved. Oh, the family restaurant was great, yeah. The, the one, we, we ask this question every so often, we'll put a thing on the post, like a, a poll in there. We ask restaurant, you know, people miss the most. Number one, the, the thing that always comes up is Anthony's and Howell. People loved Anthony's. Um, yeah, there's so many, so many ones that I wish were, were here again. Yeah, the Honeydew Cafe was another one I loved. It was here. But Annie's Pot had the greatest breadsticks in the world. It was this tiny little place in a mall, in a like at the top of the hill across from where the Ford dealership is. It was a tiny little restaurant that was there. Love that place. So they did, yes. I had their their bean soup too. It's great. We gotta go back in time. Go to all these places. Well, thank you all very much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And again, if if you do want, if you they've already gone. It's on Amazon. If you want to. Hear more of these dumb stories. So thank you all so much. Well, I will tell Kathy that I saw you. <laughs>